<clears throat> All right, good morning, good morning, prayer warriors. Happy Wednesday morning, day three. Jackie, good morning. So great to see you this morning. Day three of our prayer week. You are here this morning or this afternoon or whenever you're watching because you're ready to win the day. You're ready to win the day with prayer. You're ready to win the day with scripture reading. Tony's here. Tony's ready to win the day of this morning. Erica's ready to win the day of this morning. Who else is ready to win the day? The Munsons are going to win the day. The Smiths are going to win the day. Good morning, everyone that's logging in on day three of our prayer week because you're going to win the day and then you're going to win the week. Amen, amen, amen. Good morning, everyone. Fantastic seeing all of you joining me this morning. We've been talking about prayer. That's what this is. It's a prayer meeting. And I've been teaching on prayer for almost a year now, just trying to encourage your prayer life. We've been talking about different types of prayer. Lately, we've been talking about prayers of declaration. Good morning, Phil. Hoagie, great to see you this morning. Give Trish a hug for us. Good morning, Becky. Good to see you. Hey, prayers of declaration are when we declare the truth of Scripture in the context of prayer. Angela, good morning. Tom, good morning. I, I just love seeing all these names coming up on the screen. It's great to see everybody this morning. All right. Declaring the truth of Scripture in our prayer. Uh, Jesus said in, in, that when we pray, whenever we pray, our picture of God or our understanding of who God is has to be bigger than our problem. If your picture of God is not bigger than your problem, you'll never pray in faith. You've got to have an understanding, an image, a picture of, of a God that's bigger than your problem. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 6 in the Lord's Prayer, verse 9, pray this way, our Father in heaven. So you get a picture of this loving, caring, heavenly Father that wants to, wants to help you, has your best interest in mind. And then he says, pray this, hallowed be your name. In other words, consider the name of God. Reflect upon the name of God. Pray the names of God in your life. Hallowed, let your name be exalted. Let your name be holy. Let your name be set apart in my life. And so as, we, as we've been praying the names of God, we've been talking about the names of the Holy Spirit. And I said that one of the names of the Holy Spirit in John 14, 25, and 26 is the paraclete, the helper. He comes alongside to help. Another metaphor and, and name of God for the Holy Spirit is fire. We talked about that yesterday. Fire. Uh, fire, let, let's go back and look in Exodus chapter 40, verses 34 through 38. When the, when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, God told Moses to build a tabernacle, a tent of meeting. And the tent of meeting was going to have both a cloud that rested on it during the day and, and a pillar of fire that rested on it at night. So here's what it says. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. The glory of the Lord is his, his presence. Moses was not able to enter the tent because the cloud had settled on it, and the glory of the Lord had filled the tabernacle. Throughout all of their journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, Israel would set out. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they, they didn't leave. They stayed there. For throughout all their journeys, the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day, and there was fire in it by night. Somebody say fire this morning. There was fire representing the presence of God, the glory of God, was in it by night, in the sight of all of Israel. Everyone saw the power and presence and glory of God in fire, right? So then we come to the New Testament. On the day of Pentecost, when God poured out the Holy Spirit on the church, what, what do we read? Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. Suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then listen, there appeared to them tongues as of fire. So these, these pictures of fire rested on all of the disciples on the day of Pentecost when they received the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is a symbol of fire, right? Tongues of fire rested on them. So we said yesterday, fire consumes. Go back and listen to that message yesterday about fire consuming us. Today we're going to look at something else fire does. You know what else fire does? Fire ignites. Fire ignites. That means it inflames. It kindles. It combusts. 
It causes to burn. It sparks a fire or a flame in things. The Holy Spirit wants to inflame us. The Holy Spirit wants to ignite us. The Holy Spirit wants to combust us. So in Luke chapter 12, verse, verse 49, Jesus said this. Luke 12, 49. I have come, listen to what Jesus said. I have come to cast fire upon the earth. And how I wish it was already kindled. He's talking about his spirit, his power. I came to inflame people, ignite people with passion. Jesus came to bring fire on the earth, to ignite passion for God. Now, let me ask you this morning. If you're a Christian and you have the Holy Spirit, how can you be passionless? How is it possible as a Christian, if you've got the Spirit, who Jesus said, I, I want to bring fire in your life, how can you not be ignited with passion if you have the Holy Spirit? People say to me once in a while, hey, hey Jeff, you, wow, you're, you're so passionate even in the morning. Here's the thing. No, actually, <laughs> actually, I'm just a normal Christian who's been ignited by the fire of God. This isn't a personality thing. This is a fire thing. This is a Holy Spirit thing. So, so my question is, why aren't you passionate? Why aren't you ignited? Why aren't you inflamed? Why hasn't, why hasn't God sparked a fire in your life? Man, come on. If you've got the Holy Spirit in your life, Jesus said, I came to bring fire on the earth. Jesus, now, in, in, in John chapter 2, remember, Jesus passionately drove out the money changers from the temple. Do you remember that story? He went in, he made a whip, and he drove them out. I think there was significant passion in Jesus' life at that moment. And that was a prophetic act that Jesus did. Jesus said that that fulfilled the prophecy about the Messiah in Psalm 69, 9. Here's what, here's what we read in John chapter 2 when Jesus drove the money changers out. Verses 15 to 17. Listen. He made a, 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 scourge, a, a scourge of cords, a whip, and drove them out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen. And he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who were selling the doves, he said, Take these things away. Stop making my father's house a place of business. His disciples remembered that it was written in Psalm 69. They, when they saw Jesus do this, they, they remembered a scripture about the Messiah in Psalm 69. And it said, zeal or passion or enthusiasm for your house will consume you. You're going to be inflamed. You're going to be ignited with passion for the house of God. They see Jesus driving the money changers out. And they're like, wait a second. We remember that prophecy, that prophecy that said zeal, passion, enthusiasm, fire for the house of God would motivate the Messiah. And they see Jesus with passion. They say, okay, that's just, that's just a prophecy being, the Messiah has passion. The Messiah has enthusiasm. The Messiah has fire. See, it's the fire of the spirit that ignites us. Passion for God, zeal for his church, enthusiasm for worship, power in prayer, right? It's like Jesus is saying, I didn't come to bring apathy. I didn't come to bring complacency. I didn't come to bring a conservative spirit. I didn't come to bring dignified worship. I didn't come to bring passionless prayer. I came to bring fire. There's got to be fire in our lives, friends. There's got to be passion, enthusiasm, zeal for the things of God today. And that's what the Holy Spirit brings Jesus said, I didn't, I didn't come to bring a passive spirit. I didn't come to bring, you know, some conservative attitude. I didn't come to bring powerless and passionless prayer, unenthusiastic worship. I came to ignite your soul. I came to fire you up. That's why Jesus came. To fire us up for the mission. To fire us up for the things of God. Man, to stoke the fire in our lives and get us worshiping him, serving him, telling others about him with enthusiasm and passion. So we're going to pray this morning, friends. We're going to pray that the spirit of fire rests on our lives, that we would sh we'd be bold to share with people what Jesus has done in our life. We'd, we'd have fire in our prayer, fire in our worship, fire in our evangelism this morning, that we'd go through this day, man, stoked and inflamed. This isn't a personality thing. Don't say, oh, Jeff, that's your personality. It's not. I'm an introvert. Man, but it's the fire of God coming into a soul. It's the fire of God lighting you up. Somebody, somebody needs to be lit up today. Who is that? Who is it that needs to be lit up today? 
All right, you ready? Jesus said we could pray for the Holy Spirit. Let's go. Jesus, this morning, you said you did not come to bring water to put the fire out. You came to ignite a fire. You came to fire us up. You came to ignite something in our soul that couldn't be extinguished. So, Jesus, today we open our hearts, we open our minds, we invite you. We say, give us that, that power, that zeal, that enthusiasm for you today in everything we do. Let it be contagious. I pray this morning, Lord, that the fire in our soul would cause other people to catch fire. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody said, come on, come on. Hey, what if you were a fire today that caused everyone around you to catch fire? Wow. Can you imagine if our city was all of a sudden ignited with fire for God, passion for God? Well, let me tell you, you have the fire. You are the light of the world. You are the candle that has the flame of Jesus this morning. And you can, through your passion, you can ignite a city today. You can ignite your family today. You can ignite your marriage today. Think about it, friends. Come on. What a great day. You're going to win the day with the power and enthusiasm of Christ. Get it done today, friends. I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless.